exited his car. The action is on the back of the door. It's the bonnet, it's the front, Cale Yarborough in second. Lodine having to go down the outside there on the inside bottom. Takes place in front. And the car making go. And here comes Teddy closing up. Teddy closes on number 62, Rick Wilson directly in front of him. And car number 72, Rusty Wallace in the front of him. Richard Petty going after Richard Petty, number 43, going after Rusty Wallace and the 72 of the 62 car of Rick Wilson. 02 came back to the track. Dick Trickle, you see him there being lapped by the front five. Black flag, they say. Conversation flag maybe coming out. We've got another terrible crash. A serious crash again, and turn number two has claimed another victim, and there are still cars oh, that's coming and crashing. Car number 51 being torn up with Lenny Pond of Ettrick, Virginia. Back to the line they come with car number 75. Bonnet leading it to the back to the line as they race to the flag. What a bad break for Lenny Pond. If he had any luck at all, it would be bad. And another car destroyed. That this is a 72 car of Rusty Wallace, who had been running right there in front of Richard Petty. Right in front, and Wallace's car was the Easterfield car, entered by the Ramada Inn people for this event. Part of a campaign, a special campaign to raise money for Easterfield. Rusty Wallace twice was the United States Auto Club champion, and Rusty's car looks absolutely destroyed. As bad as the earlier incident, and I think we're going to have an opportunity to see exactly what happened here. And they say that the initial reports are that it has been a very, very hard crash on Rusty Wallace. Well, and here's still another car losing control. Well, uh, down here on Pitt Road, just pulled across the grass and came in. Car number 69, which is Mike Kempton. Rusty Wallace, handsome kid out of the Midwest. And let's look at exactly what happened here. Now, there you see Wallace in the 72, Rick Bartow right behind him, and Richard Petty next. They're out of turn two. Is there contact? Car starts to drift and go away. He may have been collected I by Rick Wilson. I think he just got tagged at the back there. The windscreen popped out there. Richard Petty just misses it. Windshield comes out of the car. As it goes backwards, it lifts the back of the car up. And he's floating backwards through the air. Similar to what we saw Johnny Anderson do a few years ago. And also Connie Saylor. What happens is, of course, these cars have quite a bit of rake from the front. They're much lower at the front than the back. And when it turned round and went down the road backwards, the air got under the... The air gets under the trunk and just lifted it up. Now, from another angle, here is another angle of what happened. You can see him sliding in and getting caught and flipping backwards, upside down, and then those hard, nasty, side-winding rolls that bite you. Well, the car just suddenly did a complete reverse roll there. It's spinning one way, and it suddenly stops and reverse spins. Now, let's take a look at the second incident which happened, which involved Lenny Pond in the car number 51. And car number 42, I believe, is involved in this. Flick Johnson's car. I think this is all as a result of that first crash, of course, uh, taking avoiding action and right into Lenny Pond's door. Thank goodness these NASCAR cars constructed the way they are with the door bars. They're built extremely strongly, these cars. In most forms of racing, if you were hit in the door like that, it would be extremely serious. Second serious incident of the 125-mile qualifying race. We are still waiting for a hospital report on Bruce Jacoby, who crashed in the first 125-mile place in almost the identical spot where number 72 has come to rest. The latest word we have from the Halifax Hospital in Daytona Beach is that Bruce Jacoby is in critical condition and is undergoing surgery at this time. Undergoing tests is the late word we have. Waiting now for any word on Rusty Wallace after a similar incident coming out of turn number two. Playing victim after victim. 
Dixon in these twin 125-mile qualifying races. Neil Warner continues to lead. Haley Armour second, Bodine in third. Brooks is fourth. Steve qualifying race at the Daytona Speedway. And as you can see, the back straightaway takes on the complexion of a battlefield. Take a look at what just happened here moments ago to bring out the caution which we are now under. That is Rusty Wallace directly in front of Rick Wilson. It looks like Wilson is in contact. The Wallace car gets sideways. Richard Petty is right there. And he threads the needle. I just barely get through. The windscreen pops out of uh, Rusty Wallace's car there. He gets behind the scoreboard, hits the grass. The car lifts a little bit. The air gets under it, and it's just like a 4,000-pound leaf being blown down with a 200-mile-an-hour air as it gets under the car and gyrates through that soft ground. From the other angle now, you see the car just getting inside and then taking that awful roll the wrong way as the wind caught it and then sends it into that series of sidewinders that... This will remain. And this, of course, set off a chain reaction with a car swerving to avoid him there. Lenny Pond trying to avoid him, being T-boned. Very lucky there that he wasn't injured at all. One of the two drivers involved in that second shot are standing by, and let's go to Nick Garrett with him now. Slick Johnson from Florence, South Carolina, the car uh, number 51. Slick, uh, what happened over there? Uh, Russell Wallace, something was tearing up on his car, a blowed engine or something, and the hood flew off or either the roof. And it started coming down in front of Lenny, and Lenny got on the brake to keep it from hitting him, and he turned sideways and went into the wall, and I hit Lenny. But you and Lenny, of course, are okay. Yeah, both of us are all right. And, Ken, we're standing by the track hospital once again here. They have taken Rusty into the hospital here for observation, and as you saw, his car was damaged very, very badly, and we hope the report will be good on him. He was here for a good call to run in the Daytona 500. Proceeds from a special promotion would go to the Easter Seal. His sponsor, Ramada Inn, was participating in that. Now back to you. Wallace, the driver who Roger Penske has been very, very high on. In fact, he ran Atlanta for him in the United States. We are back under green. There are 33 laps now complete in the second 125-mile qualifier. 82 and a half miles are down, and Neil Bonnet finds himself on the front end of that freight train going down that very, very particularly back straight away today. It has really taken a lot out of this field and out of the first 125-mile qualifier. There you see Kelly Arbor running second to the in first. Turn number one, Bonnet 
takes a look at the inside. Richard Petty, the amazing, the incredible race driver that he is, and one of the finest people in the sport of motor racing, on the back straightaway. Trouble in turn one. Car spinning, number 19, out of control, landing down to the inside is Ronnie Sanders. That car was scheduled for Dick Hayes' son. They made a substitution. Ronnie Sanders getting the throw of his life. Austin is out again. Race back to the strike. Here they come to the line. Charging back under caution. Teddy will come across first. On in his second, Yon will in third. Bodine in fourth. Richard Brooks in fifth. Allison could do one of those courses to come out of the slightly more fortuitous moment for him to get that lead, uh, that last back that he's already lost. One year ago, everything went for Bobby Allison correctly. This year, absolutely nothing going right for him. Some days are diamonds, some days are stone. Let's look at what happened to Ronnie Sanders here. Well, he was one of the lucky ones today. He hits that soft ground, and the car just continues to spin, slides across the uh, very soft infield. Hits the road racing track, just bounces over it, and carries on spinning, and nothing happens to the car or to him, luckily. And that just seems to be the luck of the draw in motor racing. Sometimes it's your day, and like you said before, that Bobby Allison sometimes it's not. Ronnie Sanders do it coming to rest. That must bother a little, though, that it is the luck of the draw so many times by which a race, and sometimes your life can be decided. Well, it, I suppose it'd be a really thought about it too much, it wouldn't be very uh, very good for you, but luckily most drivers tend to think of positive, like soldiers and policemen, it's never going to happen to them. And uh, once you start to think about it, we should be finished. Into the pitch comes Tim Richmond, number 27. This is his second stop, he must have a problem. The car doesn't need a stop at this stage of the race, but it's gas on. Richard Petty is out in front in one of the 125-mile qualifying races here today. The question is, can he stay there to the finish? Ten laps remain in the second 125-mile qualifier here at Daytona. A wreck strewn day. Black and caution has just been given to one of the cars on the track. And let's look again at that war zone that has become... This racetrack today, there you see the remains of the car number 72, which was just destroyed in a horrific crash. It's very rare that you see these NASCAR cars torn up as badly as that car and also Bruce Jacobi's car earlier on today. They're so strong. But note how the roll cage is still rolling up on car number 72. The worst thing that happened to that car was that it, as it started to spin, it, it spun one way because of the air. As soon as it hit the floor, it reversed the rotation of the spin. To Ned Jarrett. Ken, we're still standing by the hospital to get a report on Rusty Wallace, and one of his crew members just came out and said that Rusty has been moving around a little bit, and he was very muddy when they brought him in, and they're, they're cleaning him up now, but he actually has been talking a little bit, so that is uh, good news to this point, and we hope to have further good news uh, later on. Well, that is good news. That's really nice to hear, and it, again, it just demonstrates the, inte the incredible integrity of these NASCAR rules the way these cars are built. I mean, they, they race extremely high speeds and they get away with, you know, unbelievable crashes. Here they come with seven laps to go. Petty is in front. Bobby Hillen trying to qualify. 18 years old out of Midland, Texas. He's given up a, he's on the bubble right now. He's given up a college scholarship in football to try to make it. And there goes Tim Richmond taking him out of the race for the moment. Taylor Yarbo down, putting that lap on Bobby Allison. He wants to go up and hunt for first place. Richard Petty in the lead. about 20 car lengths back to the next competitor in that active lap. Well, uh, the front four cars really have made a bit of a break. They're all staying in line, and then the next four cars are running down side by side, and they'll just continue to lose the airspace as they do that. Because they lose the draft the badly. When they get back, back in line, uh, they can forget it. They come by, five laps to go. Number 
62. Nearly involved in that incident with Rusty Waller. Turn two. Richard Petty stares down. There's that second package. He's running side by side, letting the leaders get away from them. Jeff Bodine is leading that second pack. He started up on the front row of this particular race. Started in 11th spot, so he's done very well for himself today. Had a bad qualifying speed, or not a very good one, so he wants to stay right where he is. Hale Yarborough scampers down the inside, goes under the lap car. Bobby Allison goes for number 75, can't make it, falls back. And he'll single file it once again down the front straightaway. Better than 190 miles per hour through here. They make it look so easy. These are masters of this incredibly quick. a look at that second pack. Richard Brooks has worked his way back to the front of that again, followed by Mark Martin. Jeff Bedine's dropped the third spot in there, but that makes him seventh overall, but he's still good for the race. There's that second pack as you see the interval between the first group and the second group. It's about two seconds. Watching those leaders down into the turn. Bonnet loves the pass going into three. He just puts his foot on the floor and flat puts it in there. Let's see if that'll be the strategy. Walter tried to hold him before, and he had his problems there. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. We're standing by with Maurice and his brother, Richard. Maurice, he's out front now. Will he try to stay there, or will he try to drop back and try to slingshot on the last lap? No, nah, we're going to try to stay out front all the way. If they get by us, it'll be because they just flat out run it. That's the way it is here in the Tater Pit, Ken. Time and lap and effort all running out. Now, this is the spot. Bonnet loves it. I doubt that Petty will give it to him. There's that little hole on the inside, and you heard one of his crew members say they had a problem making the car handle now, and if he can't drop inside, he drops down inside, and then he wrestles with Gerald Walker for the Bush Clash lead. Let's see what will happen here. Beginning to climb the outside. And there's the block thrown by Bonnet. Well, of course, the other thing you've got to remind and remember is that when these guys go for the gap, you've always got to assume the guy behind you hasn't already filled that gap up. And Tail Yarber there, number 28, is lurking in third spot. So it's not going to be easy for Neil. Both sides have been my incredibly competitive people, but it's not going to be easy for him to just pick his spot. Here we are, but back blocking, kind of blocking off there, but drops back into line. This is where you have to grind defensively as well as offensively. You've got to look out for that man behind you, and you've got to shoot down the guy in front of you. This is making a low line going in there to keep me upon his back. Letting the car come up high so it doesn't tighten up too much as he comes into the driver for the last time. This will be the one lap to go. The white flag is out. Could be in control here is Kelly Yarborough. He can take his shot. Where will he want it to be and how will he run it? When Terry Labotte came from third, Waltrip was moved up when Bonnet took the lead, and Waltrip in the clash gave Terry Labotte nothing but the concrete on the outside of three and four. Last time, down into three. This is where Bonnet likes to make his move. He serves up his fortitude, and he makes the dive to the inside. In the first place at nearly 200 miles an hour, they take that shot. Neil Bonnet is in front, Richard Petty is in second, Cale Yarborough is in third. Here they come the line. Richard Petty is coming back on the outside. It is got on the inside, but the winner is Bonnet. And there is a spin just at the end. Bobby Hillen spun just at the end of the event. Bobby Hillen more than just a spin. What a remarkable finish. Three cars side by side across the line. And Neil Bonnet continues to wrestle number 75 across by inches here on the Daytona Speedway in 1983. Let's look at this incredible photo finish in this 125-mile qualifier. And I'm sure that last car you see at the top of the picture there, in fact, spoiled Cale Yarba's final plan. He had to go at Richard Petty, but it didn't quite come off. Neil Bonnet won the race. Richard Petty just half a door length behind him. Cale Yarba right there with him. But I think Cale's plans were spoiled just at that last inch by that uh, lap car. Wait till Sunday.
what Richard Teddy and Kelly Arborough are saying right now. Magnificent maneuver. They said there was a handling problem, and that's right when you don't want to have a handling problem, going down into turn number three, because that's where you want everything working perfectly to get you through there if you want to shoot your shot. So Neil Bonnet has won the second 125-mile qualifier and becomes a serious, serious favorite to win Sunday's Daytona 500. Bobby Allison credited with 17th. He'll have to stand on his time for the Daytona 500. But standing tall in victory lane, one of the members of the Alabama gang, as tough a race driver as that racing state has ever produced, Neil Bonnet brings the Warner Hodgson Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS back to victory lane at Daytona for the second time in a week. And Ned Jarrett is standing by to have a conversation with this young man who has continued to amaze everyone with his strength, his courage, his tenacity, and his smarts in a race car. Having a little trouble unhitching. That's been the only problem he's had thus far today. <laughs> let's, let's 